Hi guys, welcome to the start of your final chapter as algebra students, hopefully. Uh, we are skipping 12.1. Uh, you guys can go ahead and skip that. I'm, you know, take that one from me. Uh, we're starting with 12.2, frequency and histograms. And our objective for the day is to make and interpret frequency tables and histograms. All right, so problem number one is making a frequency table. So the frequency is the number of data values in any given interval, and the frequency table is just a table that groups the set of data values into the intervals and shows the frequency of each. Intervals do not overlap, and they do not have gaps, and they are of equal size. So keep that in mind. There are no gaps, there is no overlaps, and they are the same size. And when we get to histograms, they are not a bar graph. Sorry. All right, so first things first, let's just look. We've got the number of home runs by the batters in a home run derby listed below, and we want to know a frequency table that represents this data using an interval of four. So our lowest uh, you know, we could start out down at uh, 1, and we go, did I say 4? You did. All right. Two, 1, 2, 3. That's an interval of 3. Yeah. So we've got, uh, we'll do an interval of 3. So our first interval is going to be between 1 and 3. Our second interval is 4 to 6. Our second, our third interval is seven through nine. Our next one is 10 through 12. Then we've got 13 to 15 and 16 to 18. It's up there. Normally you'll use a space that's big enough for all of them. So now, how many of our data set, or data points, are between one and three? So let's look through. We've got one, the number two there, and we've got the number three. So there are two data points between one and three. So cross them out as you go, that way you can make sure you're getting them all. Next up, we're looking for between four and six. So we've got a five, and we've got a four, so that is two data points. Next up, seven through nine. We've got one seven, another seven, a nine, so that's three, and there's a, another seven. So there are four in the seven to nine range. 10 to 12, we've got a 12, we've got a 10, and we've got another 12, so that's three. 13 to 15, we've got one 14, and we've got a 15, so that is two data points and 16 to 18, we've got one. So as you can see, our intervals did not overlap. No data point would fall into two different boxes and there are no gaps there. So even if you didn't have a data point, you would just put a zero and they are equal sized intervals. So let's look at the same data and we wanna figure out what would the frequency table look like if our interval was five instead of three. So we set it up, we've got one through five, six through 10, 11 through 15, and 16 to 20. So when we count them up, we're gonna have, we'll take a look, we've got one, two, three, and there's a fourth. So we have four numbers between one and five. Between six and 10, one, two, three, four, five. 11 to 15, we've got one, two, three, four. And 16 to 20, we just have one. Okay, each of these frequency tables are perfectly valid for this data. They all meet our criteria, they do not overlap, they are the same size and they have no gaps. All right, 
Uh, letter C, the quiz scores earned by 20 students are listed below. We want to find a frequency table that represents the data. So since our max score looks like it's 10, our minimum score is one, or uh, three, we're just gonna go, you know, one to two, three to four, five to six, seven to eight, nine to 10. Okay, so now we just need to count up. How many are between one and two? Zero. So we can have a zero there. How many are between three and four? We've got one, two. How many are between five and six? One, two, three, four. How many are between se uh, seven and eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. And lastly, how many are between nine and ten? One, two, three, four, five. There we go. So where have we seen examples of frequency tables being used before? Well, what we show you after every test. So this is our data from chapter uh, the chapter 10 test for Ms. Zirzo's class and Mr. Boland's class combined. Uh, and there you go, you can see the intervals. We went 10 percentage points for each interval uh, and we showed you how many students came up in each of those percentage bands. So you can see the spread that we had from high to low. Okay, on to the next problem, problem two, which is making a histogram. So we're gonna use our intervals from our frequency tables to make our histograms. And we need to remember that it is displaying the data. So bars should touch, but not overlap. All of the bars need to be adjacent to each other. You can have a gap there only if there is zero data points in that interval. So you need to have this, all of the intervals covered and you need to have, um, yeah, all the intervals covered. No gaps. So we're gonna do hours of TV and we're gonna do a uh, number of students. So we need to break up into our frequency table. So we're just gonna go zero to four, five to eight, nine to 12, 13 to 16, 17 to 20, and 21 to 24. Mr. Bolin, how did you decide on those numbers? I just decided on them. There's no real uh, rhyme or reason. Um, you can pick. Pretty easy. You know, I, I looked for things that are going to split the data up a little bit so we can have different ranges, but uh, if you wanted to go by five or six, that would be perfectly valid. As long as you are keeping your range the same from one interval to the next. You can pick whatever interval you want. We would prefer there to be at least three or four. You can't just say zero to 24. That wouldn't be very good data for us. Yeah, three to five intervals is solid. I would say no more than eight. Yeah, no it's more than eight. It's a little messy. Yeah. It's too much work. Yep. All right, so now we need to draw our, we need to fill in our frequency table. So how many are between zero and four? We've got one, two, three, four. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> That's the count. Yep. Sesame Street. I don't know if they're old enough for that. I don't know. Uh, five through eight, we've got one, two, three, four, five, nine through 12, one, two, <clears throat> 13 to 16, one, two, three, 17 to 20, we have none. 
and 21, 24, we've got one. So now we're going to put our bars, we're going to make bars. Highest is five. Highest is five. Make sure you're labeling your two axes on these. So we label our, the way we show a histogram, we're going to be making bars and we're going to label it zero to four. Our next, uh, we'll draw the bar in. So we've got up to four students that were zero to four. So there's our first bar. Our next bar is going to be the five through eight bar. And there are five students. As you notice, the way Mazurzo is drawing these, there is no gap between those two bars. They share a wall. That's how it needs to be drawn. Okay, next bar, uh, 9 through 12. There are only two students that have that. So we put a bar up to two. Again, no gaps. 13 to 16. There are three students. Now the 17 to 20 bar, we have zero students. So there's gonna be no bar there, but we still need to represent it on the graph. And now we've got 21 to 24, there's only one student. So we just have one little bar, okay? All right, letter B, let's take a look at that one. We've got the finishing times in seconds for a race are shown below. What is the histogram that represents the data? So I broke it up into five second intervals. And you could choose to go more or less. That would be your choice. So I started at 76 and went 76 to 80. Eighty-one to eighty-five. Eighty-six to ninety. Ninety-one to ninety-five. 96 to 100 and 101 to 105. All right, now we need to count up how many how many show up in each interval. So 76 to 80, we've got 1. 81 to 85. We've got 1 2 3 86 to 90. One, two, three. Ninety-one to ninety-five. One, two, two. Ninety-six to one hundred. One, two. And one hundred five to one hundred two, and one hundred two. So that's two. I would say that most of the time your y-axis is really kind of going to go by ones and you probably won't go any higher than five or six. Yeah, we're not going to give you a giant data set that you're going to have to deal with. Unless we decide to be really, really mean. Oh, that would be fun. Let's put that on the final. Okay. So Ms. Uh, Zerzo is drawing in her first couple bars here. And again, we're just measuring up to however many students are in that interval, or how many racers in this case. And Ms. Zerzo is getting creative in her designs. We have squiggles, we have Z's, we've got a candy cane stripe. Zebra. Oh, zebra, okay. Meow. <clears throat> uh, next up, we got 91 to 95. We've got two students in that group. Uh, 
96 to 100. And the last one, 101 to 105. <clears throat> and there's two students in that one as well. If you chose a different interval, bigger or smaller, if it was a bigger interval, you'd have less bars that you're dealing with. If you picked a smaller interval, you've got more bars to deal with. Uh, so yours may not look exactly like ours. Okay. Let's go see. Why don't you guys try C on your own? All right, <clears throat> problem three, interpreting histograms. So we've got some examples up at the top there where we are describing a histogram in terms of its shape and there are three types that we are going to look at. The first one is that the bars are roughly the same height and we call this uniform. This means you know they're not all exactly the same but they're really close and it's a pretty consistent spread across your entire graph. The second one is if you can divide the graph into two parts that are pretty close to mirror images, we're going to call that histogram symmetric because it's balanced on both sides. It's a reflection. Again, they're not, they may not be perfect matches, but they're really close. Close, roughly. Yeah. The last one, if the histogram has a peak that is not in the center, we call that skewed means it's off to one side, it's not balanced. So you can really clearly see that one side clearly has more than the other in that one. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at a set of data for dollars that Jay is spending on lunch for the last two weeks. And we're gonna wanna want, want make a histogram of it and decide what, what it looks like. So I went with uh, one through five, six through 10, 11 to 15, and 16 to 20 as my intervals. So if we just count up our numbers, we've got four, 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 and two. We're gonna assume by this point you guys can count. Make sure that you are labeling your axes and you're labeling, or you're, you're putting your intervals on there. Your labels must be there. A good graph needs labels, and a good graph needs numbers. Can't spend zero dollars on lunch. Yep, he's got to spend something. So it's one to five. That was four. And from six to 10, we also had four. From 11 to 15, also had four. And from 16 to 20, we had two. So looking at this graph, to me, that looks pretty uniform. I've got three out of the four bars are the same height. So we're just gonna say that is uniform. So how much money should Jay bring for lunch next week? Ms. Zirzo says $4. Sure, why not? Well, $4 is in that, that bottom bar. Um, if she can justify oh. her answer. <laughs> Hi. Mrs. Zirzo is skewed. That means unbalanced. All right. Uh, I would say on average, he should probably bring, yeah, six to 10 bucks, because that's about the middle of what he he spends. Now, your answers may not match ours. As long as you can justify your answer and it makes sense, that's what we're looking for. You're looking at the data and you're making a justification. You're making an assessment. Some of you sports people that eat a lot might just say he should bring $15 and he's covered. I could see a justification for that. Yeah, absolutely. As long as you can justify it and it's a rational justification. All right, 
Uh, letter C, we're just looking at two graphs that are made for us. Uh, and we want to decide, are they symmetric, uniform, or skewed? Now, what we said, remember, we're looking for a peak that is not in the center. So that certainly looks like our second peak there is not in the center. So we're going to say that's skewed. Our letter B here, the last one, sure looks like we could have a line down the middle that's dividing it in half. That's going to be symmetric. Okay. All right, on problem number four, making a cumulative frequency table. So what does the word cumulative mean? Adding everything together. So a cumulative frequency table shows the number of data values that lie in or below a given interval. So we're going to start off, we've got the number of text messages being sent on one day. This is probably from a long time ago and these nowhere near match the amount that you guys actually text. Now, Snapchat. Uh, we've got in the interval of zero to nine texts, there are 11 students. In the 10 to 19, we've got three students. 20 to 29, we've got three students. 30 to 39 is three, and 40 to 49 is two. So now let's look, our cumulative total from zero to nine, it's just gonna be 11, because that's how many there are in that interval or below. When we go to the next interval, we add the three to it, so now it's 14. Next interval, we're adding that next group. We're adding three more, so it's a total of 17. Add two more, we're at 19. Add two more, and we're at 21. Your final entry in your cumulative frequency column should be the total number of data points that you have. That's a good way to double check that you counted everything. It should be your total of data points that you have. Okay. So let's take a look at letter B. We've just got a string of random numbers and we want to find out what is our cumulative frequency table. So between 0 and 5 there are 7 data points. Yes, there are. Between 6 and 11, there are 5 data points. And between 12 and 17, there are 4 data points. So our first cumulative total is 7. Our next one, 7 plus 5, is 12. And then 12 plus 4 is 16. OK, so we've got 16 total. Last example, the ages of people at a family restaurant on a given e evening are shown below. What is a cumulative frequency table that represents it? Why don't you stop the video here? Try it on your own. Welcome back from your pause. I hope you have uh, some work shown. So we've got our frequencies, 432652. And we need to just add those up. We've got 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 plus 6 is 15. 15 plus 5 is 20. 20 plus 2 is 22. All right. And that is it for your notes for today. Uh, we will see you in class.